In this lesson, we're going to focus on circles and angles. The first type of angle that you need to be familiar with is known as the central angle. The central angle, with reference to a circle, has the vertex on the center of a circle. So let's talk about it. So let's say this is circle C. And let's call this point A, B, and this is point C. So let's say that angle ACB is equal to 50 degrees. What is the measure of arc AB? Now ACB is a central angle. As you can see, the vertex is at the center of the circle. And that's equal to 50. Now the measure of the intercepted arc and the central angle are the same. So arc AB is the same as the central angle. They're both equal to 50 degrees. So that's the first type of angle that you need to be familiar with. Now the next type of angle that we need to talk about is the inscribed angle. So what do you think this angle represents? What is the inscribed angle? So in this case, the vertex is not at the center, but actually on a circle. So let's say this is A, B, and C. So angle ABC is an inscribed angle. It's composed of two chords, and that is chord AB and chord BC. A chord is simply a line segment that connects two endpoints on a circle. Now, if such a chord passes through the sense of a circle, then it's known as a diameter. Now, let's say if angle ABC is equal to 30 degrees. What is the measure of arc AC? Now you need to know that the inscribed angle is half of the measure of the arc. So the arc is twice the value of the inscribed angle. So arc AC is 60 degrees. So make sure you understand that. Next, let's talk about the tangent chord angle. So based on a name, this type of angle is formed when a tangent segment meets a chord. So let's draw a circle. So first let's draw a tangent segment. Keep in mind a tangent line touches the circle at one point and then let's draw a chord. So let's call this A, B, and C. So AB is the chord and BC is a tangent segment. Now let's say if angle ABC is 25 degrees, what is the measure of the intercepted arc? That is arc AB. So if this angle is 25 degrees, the arc which goes from A to B. So that arc is 50 degrees. The intercepted arc is twice the value of a tangent chord angle. And so that's another rule that you want to write down. Next up is the chord chord angle. So feel free to pause the video and draw a picture that represents the chord chord angle in a circle. Let's see if you can come up with it. So basically this angle is formed from the intersection of two chords. So let's call this A, B, C, D, and E. So notice that angle A, B, C, and D, B, E, they're vertical angles, so they're congruent. Now, the measure of angle ABC is basically the average of arc AC and arc DE. It's one half the sum of arc AC and arc, I'm running out of space, DE. So let's say if the measure of arc AC is 100 degrees and the measure of arc DE is 60 degrees, what do you think the measure of angle ABC will be? Well, the midpoint of 60 and 100, the middle number is 80. 
so these two will be 80. And to mathematically show that, the measure of arc ABC is going to be 1 half, the measure of arc AC, which is 100, plus the measure of arc DE, which is 60. Now, 100 plus 60 is 160. And 160 divided by 2 is 80. So that's the measure of angle ABC, which is the same as its uh, vertical angle. And so that's how you can calculate the chord chord angle if you're given the intercepted arc of the chord chord angle and the arc that comes from the vertical angle, which is uh, this one. Now let's work on some problems dealing with the chord chord angles. So once again, let's say that this is A, B, C, and that's D and E. And let's say the measure of arc DE is 70 degrees, and angle DBE is 55. What is the measure of arc AC? So feel free to pause the video and try it. So let's call this X. Now, the chord chord angle, the 55 degree angle, that's going to be one half of the sum of the two intercepted arcs. So it's one half of 70 plus x. So we just got to calculate the value of x. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the fraction. So a half times 2 is 1. So I no longer need the parentheses on the right side. On the left, it's 2 times 55, which is 110. Now I just need to subtract both sides by 70. And so 110 minus 70 is 40. So the measure of arc AC is 40 degrees. So that's the answer. Let's work on another similar problem. So let's draw two intersecting chords. Let's call this A, B, C, and this is going to be DE. And let's say that the measure of arc DE is 110. And the measure of arc AC, let's say it's 50. I know it's not drawn to scale, but we'll make it work. What is the measure of angle EBC? So go ahead and try that problem. So let's call that angle X. And let's call this angle, the chord chord angle, relative to these two arcs. Let's say that's Y. We know that the chord chord angle is the average of the two arc angles that it's associated with. So it's going to be 1 half of 110 plus 50. So 110 plus 50 is 160. And half of 160 is 80. So now we have the value of angle Y. So that's 80. And notice that these two angles form a linear pair. So Y plus X is 180. So X is 180 minus Y, or 180 minus 80. So angle X is 100 degrees. Therefore, the measure of angle EBC is 100 degrees. Let's work on another problem. So once again, we're going to have two intersecting chords. Let's call this A, B, C, D, and E. And let's say also we have another point. This is X, and that's the center of the circle. So let's say that DC is a diameter on circle X. And you're also given that angle ABD is equal to 115 degrees and the measure of arc AC is equal to 75 degrees. What is the measure of arc CE? Go ahead and try this problem. So angle ABD is 115 degrees. Now notice that these two angles form a linear pair. So angle ABC has to be 180 minus 115. So 180 minus 115, that's 65 degrees. Now angle ABC and DBE, they're vertical angles, so they're congruent. Therefore, angle DBE must also be 65 degrees. And these two are vertical angles, so 
angle CBE is 115 degrees. Now we're given that the arc AC is 75 degrees. So what is the value of arc DE? So we know that the quarter quarter angle, which we could say angle ABC, which is 65 degrees, that has to be one half of the two arcs. So arc AC is 75 plus the measure of arc uh, DE. So if we multiply both sides by 2, we can get rid of the fraction. A half times 2 is 1, and 2 times 65 is 130. So 130 is equal to 75 plus the measure of arc DE. So 130 minus 75 is 55. So that's the measure of arc DE. All right, let's get rid of this stuff. And so this is 55 degrees. Now we know that DC is a diameter. And the arc of a diameter is basically a semicircle, which represents 180 degrees. So if arc CD is 180 degrees, what do you think the measure of arc AD is? Well, we can write an equation. The measure of arc CD is the sum of the measure of arc AC plus the measure of arc AD. So AC is 75, CD is 180, so now we can calculate the measure of arc AD. It's 180 minus 75, which is 105. So notice that we have the value of three arcs, so we can calculate the fourth one. A full circle is 360 degrees. So to calculate the missing arc, arc CE, all of the arcs have to add up to 360. So first, let's write this equation. So let's call this y. This is what we're looking for. Arc AC is 75. AD is 105. DE is 55. And this is 360. So it's going to be 360 minus 55 minus 105 minus 75. So the measure of arc CE is 125 degrees. This is the answer. Now the next three angles that we're going to go over have similar equations. So let's start with the secant secant angle. So what exactly is a secant? A secant line passes through the circle at two points. But we're going to draw a secant segment. Now the two secant segments will have a common endpoint. Let's call this A, B, C. So the common endpoint is point B. And this is going to be D and E. So what is the equation that we need to know for this type of problem? You need to know that angle B is one half the difference of the intercepted arcs. So it's one half the difference of the measure of arc AC and the measure of arc DE. So let's say if arc AC is 110 degrees and DE is 60, what is the measure of angle B? So it's going to be 1 half of 110 minus 60. So 110 minus 60 is 50, and half of 50 is 25. So the measure of angle B is 25 in this example. Now let's move on to our next topic, and that is the secant tangent angle. So let's draw this thing. So first, let's start with a circle. And let's redo that. Let's call this A, B, C. 
and this is going to be D. So notice that AB is a secant segment. A secant line touches the circle at two points. And notice that BC is the tangent segment. A tangent line or even a tangent segment touches the circle only at one point. So now to calculate angle B, it's going to be one half of the difference of the two arcs. So that is arc AC and arc DC. So let's say that arc AC is 130 degrees. And let's say that angle B is 20, actually let's make it 30 degrees. What is the measure of arc DC? Go ahead and try this problem. So using this formula, angle B is 30 degrees. That's equal to 1 half the measure of arc AC, which is 130, minus the measure of arc DC, which we're going to call X. Now let's multiply both sides by 2. So half times 2 is 1. 2 times 30 is 60. And that's equal to 130 minus X. So I'm going to take this, move it to the other side, where it's going to change from negative X to positive X. And I'm going to move the 60 to the other side. It's where it's going to become negative 60. So X is 130 minus 60, which is 70 degrees. And so that's the measure of arc DC. Now what about the measure of arc AD? Now there's only three arcs in this problem. And the measure of all the arcs around a circle has to be 360 degrees, as we saw in the previous problem. So we can say that the measure of arc AD plus the measure of arc AC plus the measure of arc CD, all the three arcs, has to add up to 360. So let's say the measure of arc AD is Y. AC is 130. CD is 70. 130 plus 70 is 200. And 360 minus 200 is 160. So Y, which represents the measure of arc AD, that's equal to 160 degrees. And so that's it for this video. So arc DC is not, uh, 70 degrees, rather. I was going to say 90, but it's 70. And arc AD is 160. Now there's one more angle that we need to talk about. And it's the tangent, tangent angle. So draw a picture of this angle. So keep in mind, a tangent segment touches the circle at only one point. So let's call this point A, and this is going to be point B. We're going to have point X somewhere over here. And let's say, uh, actually, I want this to be point B. And this is going to be point C, and then X as well. So for this type of situation, the measure of angle B is one half the difference of the measure of arc AXC, that's the major arc, minus the measure of the minor arc AC. So let's go over an example. Let's say if the measure of the major arc is 220 degrees. What is the measure of angle B? So feel free to pause the video and try this problem. So this is 220. So notice that the sum of arc AXC, the major arc, plus the minor arc, those two arcs make a full circle. So those two angles have to add up to 360. So the measure of arc AC is simply 360 minus the measure of the major arc, which is 220. So 360 minus 220 is 140. So now that we have that, we can calculate the measure 
of angle B. So it's going to be one half the measure of the major arc, which is 220, minus the measure of the minor arc, which is 140. 220 minus 140 is 80, and half of 80 is 40. So that's the measure of angle B. That's the answer. Now let's work on some problems that is basically a review of the stuff that we learned. So let's call this A, B, C, and D. So we have circle D. So D is the center of the circle. And let's say that angle BDC is 40 degrees. So what is the measure of angle A? So feel free to try the problem. So let's take this one step at a time. So let's focus on the central angle BDC. So that's 40 degrees. If you recall, the measure of the intercepted arc and the central angle is the same. So they're both 40 degrees. Now in the second part, we have an inscribed angle with the vertex on a circle. That's angle BAC. And it has the same intercepted arc, arc BC, which is 40. Now if you recall, the inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. So half of 40 is 20. And so that's the measure of angle A. It's 20 degrees. Now let's consider another problem. So let's say this is A, B, and C. And we have center D. So given circle D, and let's say that the measure of arc BC is 60 degrees. What is the measure of angle C? So what do you think we need to do in this problem? So arc BC is 60 degrees. What is the value of arc, or rather angle A? Notice that angle A is the inscribed angle with arc BC being the intercepted arc. So the inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. Half of 60 is 30. Now, D is the diameter. I mean, rather, D is the center of the circle, which means that AC is the diameter. And so a diameter forms a semicircle with an arc measure of 180. So notice that B is the inscribed angle for arc AC. So B has to be half of that, which means B is 90. Half of 180 is 90. So anytime you have a triangle formed across a diameter, this will always be a right triangle. It's always going to be 90 because it's always going to be half of 180. So now we can calculate the missing angle, angle C. So we know that the three angles of a triangle must add up to 180. So 180 minus 90 minus 30. 180 minus 90 is 90, and 90 minus 30 is 60. So the measure of angle C is 60 degrees. Arc AC is 180, and AB has to be twice this value. So 60 times 2 is 120. And we can see that all three arcs, which goes around a circle, adds up to 360. 120 plus 180 is 300, and then plus 60, that's 360. So you know the work is correct. But the answer for the problem is 60 degrees. That's the measure of angle C, which is what we're looking for. Let's say this is A, B, C, D, and E. And let's say that angle A is, we'll call it X. And angle D is 60 degrees. What is the value of X? Go ahead and pause the video and try this. So let's focus on this part. 
So this is A, B, and E. And so notice that angle BAE is an inscribed angle, which means that the measure of the intercepted arc, arc BE, has to be 2x. Now let's focus on angle D. So we have this picture. And so this is BDE. So angle D, the inscribed angle, is 60 degrees, which means arc BE has to be 60 times 2, or 120. So therefore, these two arcs, which represent arc BE, they have to be equal to each other. So 120 is equal to 2x, and if we divide by 2, we can see that x is 60. So in this problem, because angle A and angle D, they share the same arc, these two angles must be congruent to each other. And so that's it for this problem. Let's say this is A, B, C, D, and E. So arc AC, we're going to say that it's 9x plus 18. And arc DE is 5x plus 10. And angle ABC, we're going to say it's uh, x squared plus 6. With this information, calculate the measure of arc AC. So we know that the measure of angle ABC has to be one half the sum of the measure of arc AC plus the measure of arc DE, since we have a chord chord angle. So angle ABC, that represents x squared plus 6. And arc AC is 9x plus 18. And arc DE is 5x plus 10. So now what we have is an algebra problem. So let's go ahead and solve it. So first I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. Actually, I won't need to do that in this example. Let's combine like terms. 9x plus 5x is 14x. And then 18 plus 10 is 28. So half of 14 is 7, half of 28 is 14. So this is what we now have. Now let's take everything from the right side, move it to the left. So this is going to be x squared minus 7x plus 6 minus 14. That's equal to 0. Now 6 minus 14 is negative 8. So what two numbers multiply to negative 8 but add to negative 7? This is going to be negative 8 and positive 1. So we can factor it by writing it this way. x minus 8 times x plus 1. And so that's equal to 0. So now we could set each factor equal to 0. So we have two possible answers for x. x can be 8, or it can be negative 1. Now it turns out that both answers can work. If we choose negative 1, the arcs will be very small. For example, arc DE would be 5 times negative 1 plus 10. So it's going to be 5. Now keep in mind, both answers are possible. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to focus on x equals 8. So that's just one of the two possible answers. You can repeat the steps with the other value of x if you want to. So let's calculate the measure of arc AC. That's going to be 9 times 8 plus 18. 9 times 8 is 72. 72 plus 18 is 90. So 90 is the measure of arc AC. Now, if we want to calculate the other ones, we could do so if we want to. Angle ABC is going to be x squared plus 8, I mean x squared plus 6, which is 8 squared plus 6. So that's 64 plus 6, and so that's uh, 70 degrees. And then if we want to calculate arc DE, that's 5 times 8 plus 10. 
which is 40 plus 10, so that's 50 degrees. Now, if you want to find the other answer for arc AC, just take this value, plug it into 9x plus 18. So that's going to be negative 9 plus 18, which is 9 degrees. So those are the two possible answers for arc AC. It's 90 degrees and 9 degrees. Let's try one more problem. So let's call this A, B, C, D, and E. So that's a secant secant angle. We're going to draw a chord chord angle as well. And so let's call this point point F. So let's say that the measure of arc AE is 130 degrees, and the measure of arc BD is 70 degrees. Calculate the angle of AFE and also uh, angle C. Calculate the measure of these two angles. So first let's start with angle AFE, a chord chord angle. And let's call that angle X, I mean or just X, and angle C we're going to call it Y. So X is one half the sum of these two, that's for the chord chord angle. So 130 plus 70. 130 plus 70 is 200. And half of 200 is 100. So x is 100 degrees, which is the measure of angle AFE. Now let's calculate y. y is going to be 1 half the difference of 130 minus 70. So 130 minus 70 is 60, and half of 60 is 30. So 30 is the measure of arc, uh, or angle C, rather. So this is 30. And so that's it for this problem.